Good morning, how are you? It's one, two, three, 2021. Right down the street from where I live is a new radio tower. One of those radio towers that has the uh, cell phone relays. Very, very, very tall. They ended up clearing out the medium where it is. It's completely cleared out. It's like a boulevard. It goes for a while in both directions. There is a stone bench right underneath. I would say there's probably a distance of less than 40 feet between the base of the radio tower and the stone bench. When I was on my way back this morning from doing what I did, I found this blue bag on the bench. And in the bench bag were five of these. 2% milk. Five of them. Three of them expire January 27th, 2021. Two of them expire today. Now, because of various dietary modifications I've been making for a variety of reasons, I have not been drinking milk. I've been foregoing dairy and meat. And for the most part, wheat as well. It's uh, doing what it needs to do. But I have this milk here, and it would be a shame for me not to drink it, don't you think? Now, I'm going to be honest with you. Whatever I was doing this morning, I had no enticement to even think about myself in the perspective of a minor. If I was young, I was probably, I understood, maybe, about the age where I would have to start taking responsibility for my own finances and figure out how to deal with that. Just so you know. I'm just letting you know. Two of these expire today. Two of them expire the day before the form is to be issued to complete my taxes. What if I hadn't found them in time? They would have expired right out underneath the radio tower. That would have been a tragedy, wouldn't it? I was concerned in the summer of 2019, there was some publicity that had been given to a young woman who was a climate justice activist. I support her very significantly, but I'd also seen for the last 10 years a unnatural and unacceptable fixation on a teenage goddess Buddha figure. And I was concerned that her righteous indignation and her significant commitment to respecting and honoring the earth was going to be exploited. The year after Time magazine published an index of murdered journalists, while, by the way, I was still disappeared and understood exactly what it meant to be a journalist who wrote on very provocative topics, including public corruption, who had been disappeared and who had a significant body of work that had also been disappeared associated on a very important anniversary, including a 20-year anniversary of an article I wrote that won an award with that index. To see that issue followed up with a cover that the person of the year was that young woman was something to take interest in. And so when the summer came, and all over the planet, young people were in the streets protesting, their teachers were supporting them, leaving class, leaving school to go protest for climate justice. I'm not going to lie, it triggered me. When I was in Honduras, I had a student. She was a genius. She had a very unusual first name. I'd never met anybody that had the same name she did. It was beautiful. But that school year, another girl who was only a few years older than her, but that went to a public school in the city, was protesting with other students against public corruption and was murdered. She was 16 years old. 
Now in Honduras, they used to have a law that teachers could actually take class time or have time as part of their relationship with their students to organize them, politically organize them. But in 2015, there were numerous changes to the laws concerning the education system in Honduras. There was an intentional stratification that was going on in terms of what was permissible for public school teachers versus what was permissible for private school teachers. And in the course of this, there were teachers that believed that they had a political duty to organize their students and that the risk involved with such could lead to the execution of an activist, a dissident, a political dissenter, who was 16. It really happened. It happened while I was a teacher. And I met with teachers while I was a private school teacher who were public school teachers, who were dealing with and grappling with the changes that were going on to change their way of life with their students and also having to deal with an understanding that somebody that they had seen and understood was a brilliant future leader of their country was murdered for protesting. This is very profound. So when there's more than 20 Democrats announcing that they're going to run for president of the United States and selectively banking their climate initiatives on protest of young people in the streets, including young people getting arrested. I pay attention. I'm very, very interested in the media portrayals of these protests. How do they want to brand climate justice activism in the United States? And how are all of those candidates branding themselves relative to climate justice activism in the United States? There's a very, very, very significant depiction of resiliency in the face of climate injustice. Let me ask you a question. Did anybody see what it looked like a year later? What did resiliency look like six months later? Nine months later, what was resiliency post-COVID-19? Do you know who was on the cover of Time magazine the year after that young woman? That's why they don't deserve to be where they are right now. Now, when I was a teacher, I walked out. On July 2nd, 2015, I walked out of the class. I said to my students, you're too young for me to ask you to walk out with me, but I have to leave. And I left. I didn't go to school the next day, despite the fact it was supposed to be a celebration. It was where the American teachers were supposed to provide education to our students in Honduras about what the 4th of July was about. I didn't go. I didn't have barbecue or hamburgers with my students that day. I got called on site. I got called in for a very brief meeting with the principal. She asked me to stay and enjoy the barbecue. I told her I was not. This was not something to celebrate. I would not have asked my students to leave class but I would have left class and I would have seen to it that it was followed up on acknowledging what teachers didn't leave class and what they did the rest of the year, the next year, and the year after that. There's no excuse for trying to provoke young people into being your army of resiliency for your political crusade. If you really respect the rights of young leadership in order to express themselves, then you have to model by example. Would you ask a 10th grader 
to go get a fourth or fifth grader out of the class to protest with them? These actually come up, these questions. What would you ask a 10th grader to do in relationship to a disturbance involving sixth graders? Thank you for the milk. I'm hoping there are no radionuclides in here that I'm going to have to contend with when I drink it, even though it's not in the course of my dietary preference right now. I'm hoping that it wasn't strategically left under a radio tower to again try to teach me a lesson without taking responsibility and identifying who you are that makes you think you're entitled to be my teacher. I'm very, very finicky these days about who I allow to identify themselves in the role of an educator. You shouldn't have left them on the street. And you sure as hell shouldn't have left them on the street so they could be pinged with electromagnetic frequencies that are going to alter their natural hormone levels and potentially have long-term implications because you want to flip a bail bond to support your favorite candidate. Just so you know. <laughs>